Ismatuhum kasair il malaika. Ismatuhum. The prophets Ali Musalatu was salam have isma. Isma is what? Being sinless. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates them sinless. Now here a common objection people bring up from the Shia agree with the Ahl Sunnah on this that the prophets are sinless. But there are other sects that take the position that prophets can sin. There is some uh, people, there, are, there is one person who is ascribed to the Ash'ari school that the Ash'ari say that prophets can commit major sins. This is false ascription. The Sunni creed by consensus is that prophets are sinless. What they dispute is prior to conveying the message, is it possible for prophets to carry out Khilaf awla, those things which are uh, considered less uh, better than that which is superior and there is a group of scholars who may have a dispute on this but the correct position is even that is impossible the correct position is that prophets are free from sin so what people do is that they cite different verses of the Quran or the ahadith, the outward of which gives the impression that this is a sin. How, how do we give a universal principle to answer all the objections? There is one universal principle. If you understand that one universal principle, you would be able to answer all the objections. That principle is that if a prophet carries out an action which is deemed as less superior, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses that as a sin in the Quran. An example, Qiyamul Layl is not an obligation or tahajjud, pre-dawn prayer, is not an obligation. But for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam, performing the pre-dawn prayer was an obligation. So if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam missed the pre-dawn prayer, that would be referred to as dhamb in the Qur'an. But in reality, is it a sin? The answer is no. But for the high rank of the Prophet wasallam, their superior rank, if they miss an action which is, is considered superior, that is referred to in the Qur'an as a sin. How do we apply this rule now? Bring the examples. Sayyiduna Adam Ali Salam ate from a tree. Eating from a tree is not a sin. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Adam Ali Salam, do not eat from this tree, the reason was that if you eat from this tree, meaning this, it is superior for you to avoid this tree. Because if you eat from this tree, you will attain certain attributes which are attributes which you cannot have in paradise. What were those attributes? If you eat from this tree, you will feel heat and cold. You will have the need to relieve yourself. If you eat from this tree, because the tree was from earth, it was an earthly tree placed in paradise. If you eat from this tree, you will have the need to relieve yourself. If you eat from this tree, you will have other earthly characteristics. So it is better for you not to eat from this tree. This is the meaning of the verse. But when Adam salam ate from the tree, by the way, when he ate, he, his, will, his free will was removed. His free will was removed at that specific instance. When he ate from the tree, he did that action which was not the superior action. So it is referred to as a sin in Al-Quran al -Karim for the high rank of the Prophet You apply this with all the other examples. Like Sayyiduna Musa salam striking the man and killing the man. Why did he strike the man? The man, he was a Qibt, a Copt, he was oppressing a Hebrew man from Bani Israel. It was superior for Musa salam not to hit the man because he could have stopped the man from hitting without striking him. But it was permitted for him to strike him as a prophet, stopping something which is evil. When he struck the man, the man died. 
So he, he did not do that action which was superior. So therefore in the Quran it is referred to as a sin. So this rule applies to all the verses of the Quran where a sin, dhamb, is ascribed to the Prophet It does not mean the way me and you would sin. What we do is a different type of sin. So this universal principle, if you apply this on all the verses of the Quran and all the ahadith, it answers all the objections. So the author states, Ismatuhum kasair al malaika. They have isma, meaning they are free from sin, like the remained the remaining angels or the rest of the angels. Kasair al malaika wajibatun. Meaning this is essential to ascribe to them isma. The Christians and the Jews do not ascribe isma to prophets. This is why the Old Testament has tampered passages ascribing enormities to prophets Like in the Old Testament, they ascribe incest to Lut Likewise, different types of sins to Nuh The Christians they affirm sinning for prophets because they want to to show the superiority of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. So they say Isa alayhi salam did not sin because he was divine. All the other prophets sinned. While the Jews ascribe sinning to the prophets alayhi salatu salam, in fact the Pharisees and the scribes were the ones who tampered the Torah and the, the Torah and all the, the Zabur, the Torah and the Zabur. Of course, this brings us to an objection which is answered elsewhere, which people ask, why were the previous scriptures tampered and the Quran is not tampered? The summary of the response is that the previous scriptures were left with the Pharisees. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated them to preserve the scriptures. But with the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the Quran himself. He created the asbab by which, the means by which the Quran is preserved. But in, with the previous uh, nations, the Pharisees and the scribes were commanded to preserve the scriptures which they failed. So, wafadalul malaika, this part, wafadalul malaika means that the Prophet wasalam, are superior to the angels. So, the, from the angels you have messengers. From the angels you have messengers like Sayyiduna Jibreel salam, is a messenger angel. But the messengers from humanity are superior to the messengers from the angels. That prophets and messengers are superior to the angels.